Welcome back for another video. I hope the coronavirus and all the stuff associated with it is treating you guys okay. Uh, I've got some bad news to share because of that. And, uh, you know, as you guys know, if you follow the channel, I was set to get married in about 30 days from now. And so Lauren and I, we met with our uh, reception venue last night and we have to reschedule our wedding because of the quarantine and the uh, thing where you can't meet with more than 10 people. So we just kind of got the shaft on that. So that's a royal pain in the hiney. But it is what it is. Today we're going to be talking about some kayaks I use for duck hunting. I have the Old Town Topwater 120, which is this green guy right here. And I also have the Discovery 119 right here. There's some major differences between the two of them. And I get questions from you guys all the time asking me, hey, Josh, which one do you prefer? We, I know you hunt out of the kayak. I know you hunt out of the canoe. Which one do you like better and why? That's what today's video is going to cover. I've made videos over both of these kayaks in the past. So if you want more details on the features of the kayaks, find those videos. I'll leave a link in the cards for you guys to find those. But today we're going to talk about how I like them for duck hunting because this is my first season using the Discovery 119 solo sportsman to hunt out of. I fished out of it last spring when I first got it, but this was the first season of hunting and this was the second season with the Topwater 120. This right here is my Topwater 120 and it is my go-to old faithful duck hunting kayak, fishing kayak, and it's the one that I've had the longest. So I've learned how to use this kayak through and through and I absolutely love it. I'll get into why I like this kayak so much later and we'll talk about the Discovery 119 later. But right now I want to talk about why kayak duck hunting is becoming such a trendy topic and why a lot of people are wanting to get into it. I personally like hunting out of kayak because it gets me to places that I would not be able to walk into or I would not want to walk into. I'm able to travel farther distances, bring my blind with me. We'll talk about the blind here later and I'm able to have a spot to sit and stay dry and get, keep out of the water. There's tons of different reasons why I like it, but another big thing is like, there's public land areas that don't allow motors. So no motorized boats whatsoever. No trolling motor, no gas motors. I know that there's some pools where there's trolling motors allowed, but no gas motors, but you can always drop in a human powered boat. So kayaks, they're a great option for a lot of people because they're, they're really affordable. And like if you're looking at a layout boat with a motor, you're looking probably three to four grand paying out for that. But for a kayak, you know, all in all, kayak, blind, paddle, 1500 bucks for a, a really nice setup like this one, you're on the water and you're out hunting for half the price of a motorized boat. Another reason why kayaks are so great is because on public land areas, I know that there's spots that don't allow uh, motorized boats. So some of them allow trolling motors that are electric powered, but there's also a lot that don't allow gas powered motors. So no matter where you go, you could most likely, depending on the spot, if there's a boat ramp, you could launch a uh, human powered boat, so kayak. These things are a great option to get you into places where you would wanna put a motorized boat in, but it's not legal to do so. So you're able to drop this in, get out, and uh, get way farther out than some of those walk-in guys. Lastly, you're able to bring a lot more things with you in a kayak than you are if you're just walking in. Uh, I know a lot of people pull a jet sled behind them, but these things, you got all kinds of space in them. You can fit whatever you want as long as you don't overload the thing and capsize. But you're able to bring a lot of gear with you, a lot of decoys is really what I'm talking about. And then you're able to bring your hide with you as well. So let's go ahead and talk about the top water. Then we'll switch over to the Discovery and then we'll talk about pros and cons of each of them and which one I actually like more. This kayak is pretty bare bones. Uh, I don't need a lot of things when I get out on the water to duck hunt. When you're fishing, you want your fish finder, you want your tackle and all that stuff. With this, you don't need it for hunting really. So what I've got up front here are some Oxbeam lights. These are four inch LED lights. Uh, they're pretty cheap and affordable and they work really well. You don't need to get a big light bar on the front. I like having the pods because I can angle them outwards just a little bit to where like, if you have a flat like six inch light bar, it's going straight. But if you're able to angle these out just a tad, 
you're able to get a little bit of a wider cast on your lights. I highly recommend figuring out a way to get lights on your boat. I've hunted out of a kayak without lights. When I first got this thing, didn't have the lights. And uh, it was spooky. It's scary paddling a kayak at nighttime with just a little headlamp on. So spend a little extra money, get the lights. And then on this one, I'm able to open this front hatch. And this is where I keep my battery and all the cords and stuff. So uh, I put on these spade connectors on there. Let me see if I can, it's right over here. And then inside this ammo can is the battery that I use. And then I hook the spade connectors directly to the terminals on this battery, put it in this ammo box, and then tuck it away in there so then it's another extra layer of waterproofness. I've never had water get into the actual hole of the boat, but this helps kind of take care of cords and all that other kind of stuff. So great thing to have, and I highly recommend lights. It makes a big difference because it's, it's without lights, it's actually really easy to get lost. So I've been lost in the marsh plenty of times, even with the lights. So I recommend bringing a phone with GPS on it and using that map to help guide you through. Um, that's come in handy quite a few times for me. So moving back here, if I'm taking this thing duck hunting and I'm using it as a layout boat, which is pretty much the only way I use this thing when I'm duck hunting out of it, I pop the seat out. I don't use the seat. So up here, what I do is I usually just have my gun and shells up front, and then I have a dry bag with uh, camera gear and stuff in it. But you guys probably don't film your hunts like I do, so you probably don't have a dry bag full of camera gear. But I do recommend looking into getting a dry bag. I usually just strap it to the front of the boat, quick and easy access when I'm paddling and getting set up and everything. Once I'm set up, I take everything I don't need up front and put it in the back underneath the blind. So paddling in, I've got dry bag, gun, shells, and all that stuff. I try to put as much stuff in the dry bag as I can. Just an extra way to keep things dry and keep everything contained. And that dry bag actually, it kind of doubles as like a, a blind bag for the kayak, okay? Back here, decoys. Like I said, this is pretty bare bones, just a basic, just rig, you know? This gets you on the water, you put the blind on it, you're pretty much ready to rock and roll and go hunt. I'll go ahead and strap the blind on real quick and show you guys. It's a Cabela's Northern Flight kayak blind. It used to be the Redhead kayak blind, but it's actually a Cabela's one. It's the Cabela's Fast Pro deal. I'm not going to strap everything in like I do when I go hunt, but just so you guys get a general idea, this Cabela's blind fits this kayak pretty well doesn't fit it flush uh, or perfectly, but it does fit it pretty well to where I'm able to hunt out of it and hunt comfortably. Some of the issues I've had is just paddling, finding a good spot to sit in here to paddle. When I paddle, I'm always on my knees. So I'm able to sit back on my knees and paddle over top of the blind. If you're sitting, you can't paddle over these doors. It's really annoying. So I'm always up on my knees and paddling. So dry bag, I usually wrap it around the blind here. This attaches, this right here attaches to the front hand hold and then I strap it in in the back and then just roll it out and deploy it really quick and easy. This year I transferred over to the final approach whoop grass on this blind. This is raffia grass. This stuff made a world of difference. I used to have to go out and cut grass and grass this blind every time I would go and take it out duck hunting. But this stuff, I'm able to just roll it out and go. Um, I think I need to get some more like more tan colors. I got the variety pack with the green and the tan and then like a brown. Um, I think I do need a little bit more tan on here, but this stuff conceals a great. It doesn't weigh a lot because when I was using real grass, it was a lot heavier than this stuff. So, highly recommend that. Plus, the blind rolls up a lot better. It's not as bulky, which is really nice. So, hopefully you guys got a little gist of that rig. I love it. It works great. It does everything I need it to do out on the water. And uh, it's extremely stable. I mean, I stand up in the thing to pee over the side and... Like, there's nothing tipping it. I mean, I've gone through t 
two, three foot swells in the thing. Like it's a 12 foot kayak built to be stable and it makes a great hunting kayak. Okay, so if you guys watch uh, some other guys on YouTube, like freelance.com or Hyper Ace Sportsman or pretty much anything, anybody from the Flyways Collective, they've got one of these. These are the Discovery 119 Solo Sportsmans. And so they're a very bare bones kind of hunting craft, just like the Topwater 120. You don't need a lot for hunting. So you can use this kayak a couple of different ways. This is actually a kayak canoe hybrid. I flip flop and interchange those names. So if I say canoe or if I say kayak, I'm meaning the same thing here. Okay. Once again, up front, we got the LED lights. I will not, not have these on my boat. It just makes that big of a difference for me. So it's a very open concept design. And the seat in here, you can hunt out of it with the seat. You can build a blind around it and do your thing in there. But um, I don't like making a homemade blind. I would rather just buy one and retrofit it to work for my needs. So I unscrew the seat and take it out. Okay, if you guys wanna know more about the kayak itself, there's a separate video, like I said, I'll link it up above. So then, that opens up all of this space in here. I can't take this out and I can't take this out because that's kind of holding the boat together. You can take it out. I'm not going to because I don't want my boat falling apart, okay? So back here, this is where the blind rests against, okay? So from here forward, that's all um, hunting gear, like gun shells, camera gear, and whatever else I need for that day of hunting goes up in the front. Now on the back here is where I keep my decoys. One thing that I've noticed between this Solo Sportsman and the Topwater, this one, it is it doesn't have as much storage space for decoys. Okay, so you know if you're loading up teal decoys, you could probably get two to three dozen teal decoys in this thing. A dozen mallards fills it up pretty good. Uh, you could stack them up and get two dozen, but I wouldn't go for any more than that. Um, you can definitely load up a sled and drag it behind you in these things. So that's one of my complaints with this boat. Another one is when I am using it as a layout boat, let me get that blind on here. With this blind on this boat, it gets very cramped. So, um, it shortens up the amount of space I have in the back, and then this bar in the front, it kind of gets in the way with my feet. So, I'm 5'10", 5'11", and it's a little bit tight for me. I make it work. I prefer the top water. It's got a lot more space in it. This thing, it's not as spacious. It'll hide you. It'll hold you. You just won't have as much room, but there's some trade-offs. So I can go with the heavier and bigger Topwater 120, I'm gonna have more carrying capacity, have more room to sit up front and not be as cramped. And I'm gonna have a little bit more of a sta more stable option to hunt out of. But if I choose the Discovery 119, it's a little smaller. There's not as much room up in the cockpit area. There's less space to hold decoys, but this is a lot lighter and I believe that this thing floats in shallower water. Now we're talking probably four inches difference here, but with duck hunting that can make a huge difference. So between the Discovery 119 and the top water, the trade-off is the weight. And so if you want something that you can just pull up and drop in, top water is great. But if you're wanting something that you can be a little bit more mobile with and you can pull up, drag the boat, wheel the boat, whatever you want to do, carry the thing to the water and then hop dikes to get into different pools, this is your better option, okay? So there's definitely trade-offs between the two. Where I hunt and how I hunt, I prefer the top water. It fits my needs better than the, the Discovery Solo Sportsman does. Not saying it's a bad boat. I love fishing out of that boat. It's a great boat to fish out of, but the top water 
I'm hunting a lot of lakes. Lakes get pretty choppy. I feel more comfortable in the top water in choppy water than I do in the canoe. Just personal preference after using the boats and being able to compare them side by side. I'm able to fit a lot more decoys in the top water than I do the Discovery. Now we're talking maybe a dozen more decoys. So hunting bigger lakes, the kayak is definitely a better option. So when it comes to like just a little puddle shoot in the marsh, the Discovery's a great option because you can just pack in two dozen decoys. That's all I really need anyways. And you're able to be a little bit more mobile, hop dikes if you need to, drag the boat down to the water if it's a little bit farther away and there's no boat ramp. Great option there. So I personally prefer the Topwater 120 because it fits my style and my needs the best. Both are great boats. Um, I'd recommend them to anybody. It just, there's just subtle differences between the two that make a big difference to the duck hunter. But this kayak blind, it fits the Discovery perfectly, fits it great, fits the top water great. So you're able, if you have both of them, you're able to swap the blind in between two of them, pick and choose which one you need for the particular day you're doing, and it's pretty great. So um, I'm not saying go out and buy two of them, but the blind interchanges between the two of them and it almost looks better on the discovery than it does the top water but that's to a human a duck is gonna just see grass and it's not gonna matter so that's about it for this comparison between the two boats and i hope i answered a lot of questions that you guys have if you have more questions leave them in the comments down below be sure to leave me a thumbs up it really helps out especially this time of year when views are dropping it just it really helps out leave me a thumbs up if you don't subscribe to the channel hit that subscribe button as well. If you guys want to follow me on my social media, I've got a Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. So be sure to follow me on there and stay up to date with what's going on. But that is all that I've got for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will catch you on the next one.